Yesterday we saw potentially the best series of the year, with NIP taking on Fnatic, with two of the maps going to double overtime or further. But it's overpass I'm interested in. It's the map where Rez dropped 50 kills, and the pistol round is no exception. He starts off setting the tone for how this player is going to play throughout this map, and he's actually going to drop an ace here. And to start off with just a good job of holding short, that's an incredible shot on towards JW, and you can see he already has two kills. One thing Rez is definitely not afraid to do is get aggressive going first, CT or T side. We're going to see this as we continue through the map, and look at some of his best plays throughout the or throughout the map and talk about exactly how he's able to achieve them and some of the smaller details that go on around here. So you can see, even though he's the player holding the backs in this scenario, he's actually going to be the player who's going to overtake the rest of his team and be ready to go in first, looking for these opening headshots. And that's exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be a smoke towards the middle of the site and he's going to find Brolin crouching behind that uh, default box. And then him and Dennis are going to do a good job here. Small detail, they jump around the truck using that smoke to isolate themselves from bank. They clear dumpster quite well. They know, okay, there's no one quite here. So they quickly move their attention over here towards bank, pushing this direction together, where again, Rez is going to find the kill. And they're going to continue pushing, him pushing down. Dennis also having a bit of information, ready to trade if someone was in this position to fight Rez. And you can see Rez now has all this information. The other two players instead of the X-ray can go back and look towards toilets. Rez is going to find the kill towards Crims. There's his ace. And that's going to be the tone for this player throughout the map. Now from that pistol round, we're actually going to be moving all the way along to round four. Teen. As I said, there's a lot of rounds to get through, 48 of them. Overtime one's obviously the most exciting. And there's 50 kills to get through. So we're going to look at a round where Rez actually has the AWP. NIP, who really knows who the AWP is? It can be anyone at any point. But there's some small details in this one which I think are very interesting. First of all being coming towards this B site. Just the small little details that pros have to worry about. Getright's going to be lining up a heaven smoke. And you can see, not until that smoke's halfway through the air, is he going to open the door and then Molotov sandbags. Now he's going to go up here towards short. Getright's going to find the entry there. And I want you to just notice how Rez peaks. He knows right now that if there was anyone towards this monster area with Exist, he would have been probably already peaked by now, trying to offer some support to that player at Monster. He knows, okay, they had two players towards A, they're going to be rotating in. So he makes sure, not, makes sure no one's trying to jump through that heaven smoking timing, just jiggling that, before pinning up on the next fastest rotation. And you can see the importance behind this. He doesn't want to get off it, doesn't want to plant the bomb, drops the bomb straight to get right, and he's going to be holding that angle. And again, he's trying to funnel them through this ABC, jiggling heaven with the AWP, making sure no one can come through con. And you can see get right's going to play accordingly. He's going to get himself away from that heaven line, and then look at anyone maybe be moving in towards ABC or this back monster area. There is going to be this fight here from Get Right. But I love the fact that they don't even clear the dirty water. They just get that AWP pinned up because they know there's not going to be in there. Otherwise, he would have already helped that exist towards monster. So that's small little details where NIP know exactly what's important. They drop that bomb over for Rez to be on the line with this AWP. And he's unfortunately for them going to lose this 1v1. Crim's going to defuse the bomb with less than a second remaining. So interesting round, only one kill from Rez, but I think it's important those small details that actually matter in the overall scheme of things at this level of play we're seeing. So not only is Rez very aggressive on the T side, but on the CT side, he's a huge thorn in Fnatic's side. As we all know, Overpass is one of those maps where if you're the A player, you have a lot of space to move and just create chaos for the T side. And Rez well, this round here is going to basically capture exactly what he did throughout the entire event, whether it was here in Con, in towards Bathroom, around that fountain area. He was very good at always finding this one kill and just disappearing. No way for Fnatic to trade him. He'd just disappear, fall away back towards the site, exactly as he does here. You can see he has 25 kills at this point. A lot of these are just one, two little kills into a round, but very important ones that disrupt exactly what Fnatic are trying to set up. You can see, kill back towards the site now, playing with Dennis over towards here. And... He was definitely not scared to re-aggress either, based on the information. Nothing spotted in here towards toilets. Dennis has spotted nothing towards long with his AWP. So Rez is going to start to move back in here and take a not too aggressive line, but just one with a little bit more information. You can see down that sandwich, you can see basically anyone in toilets or coming out towards that outside area. But what's going to happen in this part of the map is Get Right's going to find the player in Con in JW, and Twist is going to find the player on B site in Lecro. So there's a good idea from NIP. Okay, they're trying to walk towards this B site. They've got an AWP pick out here. They basically know where Twist is. The only player left unaccounted for in this scenario is Exist. And I think he might have even just thrown some nades. They probably know where he is as well. So Rez is going to take this opportunity uh, 
and just basically push up here. I don't think they actually know exist is entirely because he is walking in this scenario, but he's going to walk up here. And again, this re-aggression is something he's not afraid to do, a little bit similar to Fur, obviously has his own unique style of battle, but as this BX Cute comes in, Get Right's going to get pinced in here towards short, but Res is going to be a great supporting act here. And again, not over aggressive. He's happy to sit here, use this hole in the door. And again, look, Exist, not expecting this at all, just an easy shot in the back. And then he doesn't even need the kill here. He sees Twist post on towards his angle, which you can see is going to be prompting Dennis to move in. And Res is just going to be messing with him, opening the door, closing the door, and Dennis is going to move in while Res is creating complete chaos with Twist trying to win that fight. So he gets a 2k, baits in for the final kill, and that's an incredibly important round one for him. And not only was this man pivotal in locking down the 14th round, but the 15th round as well. You can see aggressive peak from Dennis doesn't go the way they wanted, but a good Molotov stops Fnatic in their track, and that progression smoke as well allows Rose to just hold the left side of it. And again, the chaos this man caused. He doesn't need to push forward, but his playstyle is a little bit unique in this regard here. I want you to notice how he plays this one. It's jiggling picking all these angles, pre-firing a lot of different areas of the map, and creating a lot of just distraction while his teammates move around. So you can see everything settles for a second. The long progression smokes down there. No one's really pushed off. The map is very stagnant. If you look at it right now, Fnatic are holding their backs, making sure no one's pushing behind them. You can see Crims, he's looking behind him right now. They're not sure exactly what's going on. Forrest has moved back in towards B, but they really have no information. So it's an interesting situation for both of these teams to be in. But once again, we're going to see this pre-firing strategy from Rez come in. That's an interesting flash. I don't think he quite meant to do that, but it allows him to come back here. And again, he gets a damage on towards Crims. It's not a kill. But it's a pre-fire where he didn't have a lot of chance to go down. Even on land, Crims, like, it's very hard to have that kind of reaction time. For when you see how he continues to play, very well baiting in Get Right, who's pushed himself in this corner playing anti-flash. So back to Rez now. Look at all these pre-fires he's throwing off. Pre-fired towards JW. Didn't even, nothing JW can do. Again, pre-firing that angle there. There's no one even there, but he's just creating chaos. Lecro got a kill here as these players pushed up but between this angle here. And he knows this left side's locked down. Sorry, I just hit you. But he's going to be doing this angle here. And then as Get Right takes contact towards this left side, instantly swinging, taking out Brolin before Twist finally takes him out. And you can see the space he created for Get Right and Lecro, who's also gone down in this scenario. But Get Right can go out. And again, very hard for Twist. Him and Forrest double peeking in. You can see no chance of that one going any other way. And just like that, it's a very interesting playstyle. You can see all these pre fights going on. He's not actually seeing anyone, but he does great damage towards Crims and JW as they're coming up before chilling, waiting for Get Right's contact, and then swinging back on towards that left hand side. So he gets two kills again, a great amount of damage, and as I said, an interesting playstyle you don't always see, but one that definitely worked out here. Into overtime now, round. What's this going to be? 34 is going to be another interesting one. And it shows one, Res very clean on the entries, but also the team dynamic and how NIP have discussed, or teams in general have discussed entering this site here. So you can see fast kill, and they're going to go fast on here towards this A site after that opening onto Brolin, which Lecro was the one finding the kill. But I want you to notice how teams or these top level players I think about this. They know that they want to cut off rotations to one position. And the priority is going to be bank in this scenario. So it's the easiest to Molotov off. So this is a little bit interesting just for me in general. Dennis is going to be throwing a Molotov. And then you can see also in this situation, there's going to be Rez throwing a Molotov. And just to top this all off, Lecro, Lecro thinks, I'm going to get in there as well. So you can see three Molotovs towards that bank area. This is just something that happens on the fly. It looks a little bit silly. You think, oh, what's with the communication there? But when you find this opening kill, you're going incredibly fast towards the site. All the players just molly it off because they all know that's exactly what you want to do. And then look at the crosshair placement from these players. They're going to be holding this dumpster area. Rez is the player going in first. Nice going to JW with the flashbangs. And Crims is forcing his way onto the site with the flashes. But look at how NIP in general have set up. And this round, it's good from Rez, but it also shows you how these teams operate. lecro has been holding this because yeah, he's being a little bit more supportive player. But Dennis has got this jump up position. Get Right's got the jump up position. Rez is in here also looking towards there. So you can see they've put those more tops on bank and then they're fully concentrating towards this jump up position. Rez is going to be the one that finds the kill. But Crims had basically zero chance there at all because they all know exactly where they have to look. They're all looking... Oh yeah, in the correct position, those Molotovs make sure no one's coming through bank, allows Rez to come out here, and they're just going to set this after plan up quite nicely. I'll fast forward it, he's going to find one more kill, but look at how they set this one up. Very strong, Rez, I pause at the 
the wrong time, but you'll understand. Lecro is here. You can see he can step very easily towards this jump up area, as well as get right being in a very strong spot as well to deal with anyone coming through either of these choke points. And these players have got backs. It's all being cleared out by Dennis and Forrest. So a very clean round, three nice kills from Rez. And you can see how these teams operate with their Molotov and the utility usage. They know exactly what needs to be done. And they're all on the same page, maybe too much at times. Back over to the CT side, as, and as overtime seemed to go, back and forth, back and forth. Interesting wall bang here from Rez to start off with. You want to see it? Well, this is it here. And he's going to get a nice little tag on towards Twist early in the round. And all the little differences add up, right? And once again, we've seen Rez do a lot of different things. Play towards the site, play aggressive. He's going to go back towards his old tricks in this particular round. I want to show you the, the wall bang because it's pretty cool in general. But once again, they're going to be clearing this front toilet area out quite well, as you can see, Fnatic. But... Once again, Rez pushing out here, winning that fight on towards Brolin, and again, he's back onto this side, as I was talking about, over and over again, this man getting these kills and falling away. And once again, not only is he going to do that, but he's going to be pushing down behind and winning them yet another round. Very similar to the one we saw earlier, where he manages to distract Twist the Orpa and Dennis pushed out short. Hopefully you remember that, it wasn't too long ago in this video, but he's going to be up here behind Sandwich getting a lot of information, which allows a lot of fast rotations for NIP, because not only does he have a lot of sound cues pushed up here towards Sandwich, which obviously gives early information, but it allows all these players to rotate here towards the B side. You can see he's basically put here by himself. It's a good read from NIP in general, but as this is going on, he's going to eventually end up pushing behind. Very similar to before I said, he's very good at using these cues and the information fed to him by his teammates to know exactly when to push down and when to get aggressive. And this is an interesting one right here. You can see he's going to be mollying the site, obviously trying to help out his teammate in Lecro. He's going to end up going down, but you can see the stress and how focused in on what's going on these players are. At this particular junction in a game, it's going to be crazy. But you can see from Crimson's point of view, that Molotov clearly came from short, but they have no idea because even a veteran such as Crims in this kind of situations, you're not going to pick up on everything and nobody's perfect. So you can see Bomb's going to go down here. Exist thinks he's got him covered for anyone pushing an ABC, but Rez, he's pushed, pushed down here behind. Luckily for him, the Molotov not detected. So he's going to find this Bomb Planner and this is interesting right here. He flashes over the top, makes it so that the player has to go looking for him. And I love the balls of steel here because this goes jumping past him. Presuming Rez is going to run away, he doesn't, he sits there, and again, that's a 3k and a pivotal round, putting NIP up 23 to 21. And he had a lot of other incredible rounds throughout this map, as you can see, he ends up on 50 kills. I'm going to be just showing you some of the best highlights on the screen right now. But honestly, that's it for the really important rounds, the ones I really wanted to show you. So, I'm going to leave you there. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video, and I'll catch you all in the next one.